Right. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Alexis Wasson, and I am the K-8 Social and Emotional Learning Counselor uh, for Lancaster ISD. I am housed at Lancaster Middle School, but available to provide additional supports and services uh, to students K-8 in a virtual setting. The purpose of tonight is to give a brief introduction of social and emotional learning and connect families to community resources, featuring a special guest from Harmony Community Development Corporation. Before we continue, I would like to invite you all to participate in a little social emotional learning activity with me. We will do a mindfulness self-compassion exercise because sometimes we need a reminder, right, to be our own friend. So if you would, please take a moment to unclench your jaw, release your tongue from the roof of your mouth, relax your shoulders, take a, a few deep breaths. If it feels comfortable to you, you may close your eyes or focus your gaze uh, gently on the floor and follow along with me as I read the compassion activity. Self-compassion is all about that gentle approach. It's about holding yourself in a way you would hold a small animal or a child, or the way you would want a loved one to hold you when you're down. Studies show that practicing self-compassion can increase your overall well-being and reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. It's not about getting rid of bad feelings, but rather choosing a kinder response. It has three parts, kindness, mindfulness, and common humanity. Pause and take a breath or two and notice how you feel in your body. Let your breathing be natural Start by focusing on your breathing. Imagine you can inhale kindness, inhale compassion, inhale whatever you need right now. And exhale whatever is hard, whatever is heavy. You can pick it up later. Every exhalation is a chance to let go. When you're ready, gently ask yourself, what do I need here, right now? What are the most supportive words someone could tell me? You don't have to look for an answer. Just let whatever arises be there. If no words come, or if you prefer, you can use a version of these phase phrases. I am okay. I do not have to solve this right now. This is really hard. I am not alone. Other people feel this way too. Repeat your own or any of these phrases as much as you need. If you feel tension in your body, or if big emotions come up, you might ask, what is my body telling me right now? What parts of me need kindness right now? You can direct those kind words to whatever parts of you need it the most. Maybe even give yourself a hug.
As you finish, imagine someone who loves you or someone you love dearly giving you a big hug. Let yourself really feel supported. Try to care for yourself as gently as you would care for a friend in need. Take a few more deep breaths. When you're ready, you may open your eyes. And so oftentimes we all have so much going on. We're always ripping and running and caring for others. Um, all of us here just finished a long day at work. So it's just easy to forget um, to check in with ourselves. And so I hope in some way that that was meaningful. Um, if I were to do an activity like this with students, we would extend it um, afterwards uh, by having a discussion or a journal reflection on what that experience was like for them how it felt to be kind to themselves, possibly asking them how they could be kind to others, and exploring other um, opportunities or things that they can do when they feel like they're struggling. Okay, before I pass my virtual mic, I would like to share some information about what social and emotional learning is. So you can see on the screen there that we have the official definition from CASEL. Social and emotional learning is all about developing healthy identities, managing emotions, and achieving personal and collective goals. It is how we feel and show empathy for others and establish and maintain supportive relationships and make responsible and caring decisions. I often think about it as when we're looking at self-awareness, do I know how I'm feeling? Self-management, am I able to manage those emotions and be socially aware of how other people are feeling and be able to interact positively, empathetically, and supportively with others and take all of that and still manage to make responsible decisions for myself. We attend classes, right? We go to school and we learn about um, skills that will help us in our academics, our work, our profession, sports, and other things that interest us. But commonly, as a society, we don't often take time to um, learn emotional management skills, right? And those are those soft skills that we use every single day. Um, when we're interacting with others, the way we respond, if we're upset or overwhelmed or overstimulating, those are things that kids pick up. But this school year, all of our students are participating in Move This World, which is a social emotional learning program um, that teaches them lessons that emphasize those five key areas of SEL. And then what I do as SEL counselors, all counselors do this, of course, but I am specifically focusing on working with students in those areas individually or in small groups about building the materials that they've learned from some, uh, Move This World and using other activities similar to the one that we just did together. Now, at this time, we will have a brief encouraging word for my high school SEO counselor, Ms. Anderson. Good evening, everyone. I am Mika Anderson. I am the SEO counselor for 9th through 12th grade. And I am so grateful to have this opportunity to be able to give you words of encouragement on this thankful Thursday. So the encouragement that I want to be able to offer to our staff, to our students and to the teachers and the parents is that the best day of your life is the one in which you decide that your life is your own. No apologies, no excuses, no one to lean on, no one to rely on or to blame. The gift of life is yours. It is an amazing journey and yours alone and you are responsible for the quality of it. And so guys, during this time, because we are still dealing with the pandemic, we have to remind ourselves that our life is our own and how we choose to live it. Thank you for allowing me to share. 
Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Okay. And so, of course, I'd be remiss not to mention um, the pandemic, right? This is a major life-changing experience for all of us. Um, and it's counted as a collective trauma. Though we're all experiencing it together, we each have our individual unique uh, stressors that have been placed on us as a result of this. And so even things that we had to do uh, pre-pandemic might seem a little bit harder or heavier now, um, considering everything that we have going on. And so this can cause us um, to not be those productive individuals we once were. We might find ourselves spending more time in our fight or flight or freeze modes um, as we're focusing on survival at this time. And so um, Harmony a Community Development Corporation offers counseling and other support resources, resources for families to help them navigate those difficult stressors. And so without further ado, I would like to pass my virtual mic to Ms. Seifu so she can share some information with us from Harmony. Hi, thank you so much, Ms. Watson. I loved your exercise. Thank you for just helping me slow down. I just thought, okay, don't fall asleep. <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you for slowing us down. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes and share about Harmony Community Development Corporation. Uh, Harmony Community Development Corporation is a nonprofit. We're actually located right we're your neighbors. We're just right in South Oak Cliff. Um, and we have been around for, as you see, almost 20 years. We were started by Concord Church. And our mission is to advance God's presence by strengthening families and neighborhoods. And so we do that in so many different ways. Um, our services include mental health, employment readiness, and food resources. And if you are interested in accessing our services, this is our contact information specifically for the counseling center. That's the counseling center number. And then the website is for all of the services that I mentioned just a moment ago. And so I'll get a little bit more into the mental health services. In terms of the employment readiness, we have a whole program that takes people through the whole duration of you know, employment search, or if you're not sure how to interview or what position might be a good fit for you there's there's a whole mentorship program that helps people through all the phases and then we have a food resource and food pantry that's um, really healthy i go through there and i just am so amazed by just how healthy things are there's even fresh foods it's really honorable as well because we let individuals and families decide uh, to some degree, you know, what they feel like is best for their family. Um, and so in terms of the counseling services, it's actually Monday through Thursday afternoon and evenings, because we know most folks are trying to come after school, after work, and we don't want people to have to miss that if they don't have to. And then we have some Saturday times as well. We offer, right now we actually have funding to offer anybody in Dallas County three no cost sessions, both for individuals and married couples. Um, there's no catch as long as you're in Dallas County. Um, our fees, even beyond that, if you want to continue on after the three, they're definitely um, much more affordable. We just want to make services accessible. We are a community mental health clinic. Um, and so we we want to remove all the barriers to access to care. And so part of that is making sure that, you know, we're not charging the general 150, 250 per session. That's really normal. Um, we also have support groups. And so if you look at our website, you'll see we're actually just starting um, various groups and parenting classes. And so that's another option. Um, and then we'll, we offer these year round. And so even if you can't make this rotation, we will start back up again in January with the support groups and the parenting classes. The counseling though is definitely, um, you know, you, you and your counselors start just as soon as the two of you um, are ready. Then for minors, there's actually no cost family counseling. 
And I worked a nonprofit my whole life. I could not believe that when I found when I joined Harmony, because you almost never ever hear of no cost professional counseling services. And so all of the clinicians are licensed in this program. And so you're really getting quality services at no cost. Um, so as long as there's somebody in your family that's under the age of 18 and you have consenting rights for this minor to access me medical care, then you as the caregiver or the parent can call us or there's an interest form on our website. Just you can fill that out, whichever is easier for you. And then we'll, uh, we'll either answer your call during business hours or call you back from the interest uh, form and um, we support the whole immediate family um, through that counseling services and it's a minimum of five sessions and so families generally make significant progress when they participate in the sessions. We also have resources through Facebook Live. We're actually about to, I'm going to transition right after this where I have posting a regular Facebook Lives where we provide mental health education and starting tonight, we're actually doing a specific weekly focus through November on mental health. And so you'll, if you go to our page at Harmony CDC, you'll see that we've already had lives where we invite different professionals on our team and in the community, uh, be it mental health providers, or for example, you know, before back to school, we knew parents were feeling a lot of understandable anxiety, how do I adjust to this? And so we brought in um, teachers, administrators of colleges, um, universities, schools, and so just to help talk through from, from the whole child, how do we support the child? How do we support the parent to adjust? Uh, so we've had about three this year specifically that would be relevant for parents and children. We also have a wellness blog on our website where our counselors and staff write uh, blogs and information articles uh, just to provide, again, additional resources to help you uh, cope, such as managing the school year, um, managing anxiety, so many different um, tips for wellness. So what can you expect from counseling? Uh, I know a lot of times people kind of are wondering what's going to happen. They generally know they're distressed, but they don't quite know um, much more about what to expect. So you can expect to learn how can we manage inappropriate behaviors, right? Most of the time, people who are calling for counseling for their child, you know, there's some behavior that's proving inappropriate, inconvenient to an adult. And so we can talk through what are things that are evidence-based, supported by research that help um, manage and shift things from inappropriate behavior to expected behavior. You can improve mood functioning of your child as well, um, as they may process, for example, as we talked about COVID, the anxiety of the season. Um, the CDC reports that there's 40% increase in uh, mood uh, uh, mood issues for children, such as depression and anxiety. And so we can process a lot of these normal reactions to difficult circumstances um, that maybe this year or even things of the past, you can expect to feel like your stress is reducing. You parents generally also say that they feel like they're better able to cope with the stress of the times and feel better equipped to balance life and parenting demands. It's start, parents also share that they feel like it gets easier to enjoy their child um, through counseling. And so this is a self-assessment. If you are a parent or caregiver, primary or secondary caregivers are welcome to participate in therapy with us. So the first question is, are you generally able to parent as you would like to? So knowing that none of us are perfect, but generally, do you feel like generally I'm able to parent as I would have intended to? The next question would be, are you mostly enjoying your experience of parenting? Are you 
mostly or generally enjoying your experience with parenting. And then lastly, do you generally experience your child as living up to their potential? Do you feel like your child is generally living up to, to their potential based on their age, based on who you know they are? Do you feel like they're generally making uh, appropriate choices? And so, you know, this was just kind of for you to stop and check in with yourself and just see where, where did that register? Am I mostly saying yes, mostly saying no? So these are areas where counseling and, and support groups and parenting classes can provide support as we deal with the whole child um, and support the caregivers, right? Because we know the value of supporting the whole family. Um, a lot of times I find that people think of counseling as do I need it or not? At the same time, it's quite possible that one may not need counseling, but yet still could benefit from it. And so I hope that you, you will give yourself the grace to consider, okay, I'm, maybe I'm not sure if I need it, but would it be helpful to have somebody else with me through this, especially in this year? Would it you know, be helpful to just share the burden of things? Um, and not just somebody, but somebody who's specifically been trained in you know, navigating functioning challenges, functioning stress. And so if, if you feel like it could help or you're not sure, then I would encourage you to consider calling or, or visiting our website. Um, if nothing else, you kind of like maybe um, how we approach a doctor, right? We, so we go to a doctor for a checkup. Therapy could be that way too. You could just start one session if you're, again not sure and just kind of see and then um and then make a decision so those were my thoughts uh, again i just want to leave our oops our contact information uh for you i'll just show that one more time Whoa, okay no that's not working i'll just go back to the contact page and those were my final thoughts. I'll just be available to answer any questions that are available. Um, does anybody have any questions? Okay, should any questions arise, uh, for those of you who are watching this um, later, uh, please feel free to um, email me or give me a phone call, or you may also uh, contact um, Harmony uh, directly I'm using the information on the screen as well. Um, Ms. Sifu, thank you so much for sharing that information. Oh, yes, Ms. Sessions? Yes, I have a question. Thank you for presenting. Um, my question is, do you all do any in-school support? And when I ask that, like, um, when we have groups, can you talk to like a group of students? Maybe we have a group of students that are grieving or anxiety. Do you do that type of support? Absolutely, we do. We do a lot of community partnership in terms of, you know, partnering with existing initiatives. Um, and so, yeah, we would definitely be glad to um, support you in that. And so if that's something you're interested in, probably the quickest thing to do would be to go to our website and just fill out that interest form and, and state what uh, specifically like time, state, um, are you, are you saying in person or virtual? Does it matter? Virtual. I, it's virtual. Yeah, definitely, definitely virtual. Definitely virtual. Okay. Yeah. We and the, the last question is if we, um, utilize you all in that aspect, do you do them in the evening? Absolutely. Yeah. The awesome. majority of our de demand and need is at night. And so we definitely accommodate that. Okay, thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm glad you asked. Yes, yes. thank you, Ms. Sessions. That was a great question. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any questions? I, I have one. Good evening. This is a selfish question. Um, I'm working on my LPC. <laughs> um, do you have um, opportunities for people that are in training? 
there? Yes, we are also a training facility. And okay. so we have practicum students and uh, provisionally licensed clinicians. So yeah, definitely okay. feel free Thank to reach you. out as well. Yeah. Any more questions? All righty. Oh, let me check the chat. Yes, I will sh um, share my PowerPoint as well. Okay, so that is all um, that I had to share with everyone today. Again, I just wanted to create a, a short opportunity to give a brief overview of SEL, um, as well as um, give our families the opportunity to hear from the community uh, resources and the partnership that we have with Harmony. Um, before we go, I want to invite you all to take three deep breaths. And in relation to our compassion activity that we did, in your mind, think of one kind thing that you can do for yourself to close out your evening. And thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being in attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Glad to be with you. Thank you. Bye.